All right, hello guys. So the last time when we learned about 1.2, we covered four important concepts. The very first important concept that we learned from 1.2 is about a graph of equation. I show you guys how to um, sketch a graph of a linear equation and also a quadratic equation. For a linear equation, we only need two points to sketch a graph, right? But for a quadratic equation, unfortunately, we need more points than that. We need five points. And to my recommendation, I will use the set of five x values, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Um, there's a reason for that. I'm gonna show you guys how to like pick your five points to sketch a proper, like like a decent um, quadratic equation in the future, like later on, in the later sections as we get to it. But for now, let's just stick with these values of five points that I just mentioned above. And the second important concept that we learned from the last time is about the intercepts of a graph. Intercepts of points, right? Whenever I, I, I see the word intercepts, that refers to points. And again, a point has two parts, right? It starts with an open parenthesis, and then it has an x coordinate, a number for x, and a comma, a y coordinate, a number for y, and then it ends with a close parenthesis, okay? So make sure you don't miss the parentheses. Make sure you don't miss the comma. Make sure you don't miss any of the two numbers. And make sure you keep the order of the numbers like properly. X goes first and Y goes secondly, okay? And for intercepts, we have two types of intercepts. We have X intercepts and Y intercepts. X intercepts are um, like X coordinate or the point that the graphs intersects with the X axis. And same things go for y, y intercepts, okay? They are just like coordinate, Y coordinate or points where the graph intersects the x axis, okay? And like I mentioned on the note on the last video, a graph may have no intercept or have several intercepts, okay? It depends on the function that you're dealing with. Um, a good way to find the x intercept is, is when you let y go to zero and then you, you solve for x and then vice versa for y. To find a y intercept, you let x equal to zero and then you try to solve for y, okay? Um, the third concept of the last time was about the circles. I know lots of people have trouble with circle. I know completing the square is hard. I admit it is really hard. I, I used to have a problem with it. Um, I will suggest Google completing the square worksheets and practice like two or three problems like that because I'm, I'm pretty sure you're gonna see it in the quiz, which is next week. So make sure you get ready for it. Be repaired, okay? And about a circle, make sure you remember the standard form of the circle. It is x minus h, all square, plus y minus k, all square, equal to r square. Remember on the right hand side, it's not your radius, it's your radius square. So if you want to find the radius, you must square r square, okay? And in a circle, the most important things are the center, hk, and the center are okay so as long as you have the center and the radius you can sketch a graph of a circle okay and in the worksheet if you haven't figured it out in your example three in your part i make the the radius negative that means there's no solution for your part okay so in the test if you have a negative radius that, that that makes no sense okay so you can conclude your answer by saying no solution okay and the very last important concept for business major is about the points of intersection where we have to find a break-even point. Break-even points is when it happens when you have the cost function equals to the revenue function. Okay, the way I think about the cost and revenue function is like cost is what you have to pay for say, is when you, you like, Okay, for example, if you want to um, make a business for like lemonade, if you want to make a lemonade stand, cost function is how much you have to pay to set up the the lemonade stand okay and the revenue is how much you get after you sell your lemonade okay the profit and the loss happen okay first of all the the profit happens when the revenue is bigger than the cost to get the profit we're gonna take the revenue function minus cost function and the loss function happens when the cost function is higher then the revenue, okay? So the last function equals to cost minus revenue, okay? If this makes no sense, please let me know, okay? 
All right, let's talk about today, 1.3. We have lines in, in the plane and the slope. This one is a very important concept in calculus. So let's, let me guide you guys to this. So let's start with a quick review of some own concept. We have the simplest mathematical model of relating two variables is the linear equation, y equals to mx plus b. And in here, the two um, variables that I refer to are y and x okay it's just like the last time when you read the 1.2 when you read the first example about like your grade and the amount of time that you study per week for a class right so x and y in here they have the they have like similar relationship to that x in here can be any value that you want to get and y in here for each x value that you plug in into the equation you're gonna get a fixed y value corresponding to it okay it's not like you can choose two points I mean, it's not like you can choose two numbers. There we go. Okay, you can choose only one number for x, and then you get the other number for y, okay? And then this equation is called linear. Why? Because the graph of it is a line, right? It's, it's a straight line. It could be a falling line, or it could be like a rising line, okay? So we have four cases um, for the slope and for the line. The line is increasing, or I call it the rising line, only when the slope, m, is greater than zero, is when you have a positive slope. If you look at this equation in here, the slope in here is two, it's positive because it's greater than zero, that's why you have a, ri a rising line. Now, some of you guys may have a question, well, in this equation right here, I have two numbers, right? Two and one. How do I know which one is slope, and how do I know which one is, you know, not the slope? And I'm going to tell you this, m is the slope. The free number, the loner, 1 in here, we call it the, the y-intercept. Why do we call it the y-intercept? Because if you plug in 0 for x, you're going to get this one in here. Or in general, you're going to get that like free number, the one that doesn't attach to any variable. So we have two type of numbers. In a, in a linear equation, we have the slope, which is standing in front of x, and we have like a free number, which is like standing by itself alone, right? Okay, for like the shape of the graph of how the line is increasing or decreasing or like flat down, it really depends just on the slope. It has nothing to do with y intercept, okay? The second case is when you have a flat line, a horizontal line like this. This happens when you have zero slope. In other words, your slope is, in other words, like your m value is zero. If you look at this equation, you're going to ask me, well, I have no x, right? So what is my slope? Like, I don't have any number in front of x. I don't even have an x in here. How can I know? And I'm going to tell you in here, you can imagine it as zero x, like y equal to zero x plus two, right? Because zero x is just zero and zero plus two is just two, right? This one and this one, these two equations are the same thing. But we have to have, like, you know, think outside the box. And in here, you can see that um, there's a number in front of x. The slope in here is 0. Okay? And then the third case, when you have a falling line, that happens when you have a negative slope. To make it more clear for the, for the third case, let me write negative 1 x plus 2 in here. Whenever you see just a negative without any number in here, it means negative 1, okay? Because... If you have a negative 2, it will show you, like, y equals to negative 2 and then plus x and then plus 2, right? But if there's no number, like, after the between the negative and the x, it means it's a negative 1, okay? So let me get this example out of the way first. Okay, since this number, the slope in here is negative, we have a falling line, okay? And the very third, I mean, the very last case in here, when you have a straight like vertical line, I mean, why not, right? Because we have a horizontal line ready. So what happened if we have like a vertical line, right? If you know this, this is the only case when we start a function with x, not y. We don't even have any y in here. And we cannot make up any like letter for this one. We cannot just write, write zero y because that doesn't help. So if you notice in here, there's an x in front of x, we have no number, but there's no y, right? So this one, we will say m is undefined, okay? So among the four cases in here, notice that this one is the, the only case that we don't have any y for it. And if you don't have a y for a linear function, 
we say that the M, the slope, is undefined, and that is the only case where you have a vertical straight line, like straight down line. Okay, so more explanation. What does what what does a slope mean, right? The slope or the steepness of the line is the number of the units the line rises or falls vertically for each a horizontal change from left to right. Okay. So let's talk about the first uh, picture that we have in here. If I zoom it out a little bit in here, you will see that um, the slope in here is 2. And if you want to write as a fraction, 2 is actually 2 over 1, right? For each, like, 2 units that you going up, you have 1 unit of going sideways, okay? We're going to talk more about this in, in, in later um, objectives. This is what we call by rise over run. Probably some of you guys might heard this from high school or something like that. This is the the method of rise over run. Okay, let me put it in there. This is rise over run. And if a line does not rise or fall, it does not have any steepness, right? Because it doesn't rise or it doesn't fall at all. It just runs straight. That's what I mean when I talk about this case, like the second case. It doesn't rise, it doesn't fall, it just runs straight from left to right. It's a horizontal line. Then the equation of it would be y equals to b, just like what we have in here. And again, if you want to think about it, this function can be um, like understood as y equal to 0x plus b, okay, right here. And then the last case in here that I just mentioned above, the case when we don't have a y, then m is undefined and we only have the function x equals to a, where a is the number on the x-axis, okay? So this is for the third case and this is for the fourth case if you want to get some reference of the wording in the picture, okay? Notice that there's a, like some similarity of horizontal line and vertical line. Horizontal line, we start with a y, vertical line, we start with an x, but in each of the functions, y go to um, b and x equal to a, we only have one variable and we have one number, nothing else, okay? All right, let's talk about the very first objective of the day, using slope. All right, so the slope intercept form is the equation of the line, I mean of the slope intercept form of an equation of the line. Okay, so just like a reference for future or even in the assessment, if I ask you to write the equation in the slope intercept form, I refer to this form in here. I refer you to solve for y in our word, okay? So if you have like um, something complicated as, I don't know, like 3x plus 5y equals to, say, 0, something like this, this is also a linear equation, but this is not the slope intercept form at all. Why is that so? Because if you notice, the y in the slope intercept form is isolated. This one here is not isolated at all. And what do I mean by isolated? Isolated, it means that y is kept like standard alone by itself on, on one side of the equation. This one here, it has the five on the side of the equation. It has like the three x in there. There's so many things going on in the left hand side of the equation. That's why this in here is not the slope intercept form. How can you get this to be in slope intercept form? Well, you have to solve for y. In order to solve for y, you have to, for example, for this example, we first will minus 3x from both sides, and then we're going to get something like 5y equals to negative 3x. And after that, to isolate y, we're going to divide everything by 5. So this is what I refer to slope intercept form. Okay, notice that the y in here is isolated already, right? Like there's only y on the left hand side of the equation. And what I mean by equation, I mean like the equal sign here. This premise sign length in the equation. That's why it's like equal in equation. English word. Alright, let me take these out first. Okay, so in real life problems, the slope of a lot can be interpreted as either a ratio or a ray, okay? So we have two cases in here, a ratio and a ray. A ratio is like a fraction. So if an x, if the x-axis and y-axis have the same unit of measure, then the slope has no unit. 
and and this is referred to a ratio. Otherwise, a slope is a ray, a ray of change. So, if you driving a car, you want to know for a fact that you have something like. I don't know if you drive in the freeway. The minimum uh, velocity, I believe, the minimum speed, I think, is like sixty-five mph, right? So if you if you notice mph in here, it means miles per hours, right? So it means that you can run sixty-five miles for every one hour. That should be your speed. This ratio in here, since the sixty-five has the unit. And the one in here also has a unit, and these units are not the same. This in here is the rate, okay? This in here is a rate, it's not the ratio, okay? Another, like, example for a ratio that I could think of right now is, like, if you have, like, two candies, and if I have four candies, I don't know, because, you know, I like candies, so I have more than you, maybe. Okay, I call this a ratio. Why? Because two candies and four candies, they're all candies, right? They have the same unit of candies. That's why we call this the ratio. And again, this is not the case of ratio. Let me just put like ratio in here and then just like, like exit out. This is the case of rate. Why is that so? Because miles are different than hours, okay? Miles and the hour, they're not the same unit. And this one, I refer them to candies. They both candies. Like you have two candies, I have one candies. I mean, I have four candies. They are candies, so they just you know ratio. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the first example. Uh, describe the practical significance of the y-intercept and slope of the line given by the following equation. The sketch your graph. Okay. How can we do that? For my part, for my example, a business model the total cost of the product with x units by the equation cost equation c for cost c of x equals to 50 x plus 350,000 all right so first of all let's talk about like the two numbers in here we have two numbers 50 and 350,000 which one in here is a slope and which one in here is a y in the set, right? From the, from the very like beginning, I just want you to get whichever number that is attached to x or like standing in front of x, we call it a slope. And the other number, the free number or like the loner, we call it the y in the set, okay? So what does it mean for the slope and what does it mean for like y in the set in this specific like uh, situation of, of this business model? Well, the slow, Well, let's talk about the wind set first because it's easier. Okay, the wind set in here, it means that at the beginning of the time, um, even for, for zero unit, like even if you don't like produce any unit at all, you have to pay $350,000. Okay, so if you want to put it as a point because this is the wind set, it has a form of zero and then 350000 it means that, well, before you produce anything at all for this business, you have to pay $350,000. It may be for, like, the charge of, you know, like, labor, paper, supply, expenses. I mean, expenses, transportation, something your business might need. But, like, this cost in here, it doesn't involve in producing unit, any unit yet. Okay? And what does it mean by the slope? Let me change the color again to, I don't know, blue. The slope in here for 50. Okay, just imagine if you put in, if you produce like one unit in here, you will, it will cost you 50 times one plus, okay, let me put it down here. 50 times one plus 350,000. Uh, what is it? This one is 350, zero, and then 50 again. Okay, it will cost you three fifty thousand and fifty dollars to produce only one unit. Okay, the fifty dollars in here, this fee in here for producing one unit, and the three fifty thousand here is for the fixed cost, is for like labor or other expenses. Right? Just imagine if you have like two units in here, it will cost you like another fifty, right, for that extra unit. So you will have to pay a hundred on top of the three fifty thousand dollar, right? So for every unit that you pay, you have to pay another $50, right? So that's what it means for the slope. 
the slope in here, slope m equals to 50, it tells us that the cost of producing each unit is $50. This is also the marginal cost. Like later on in the course, we, we're gonna talk about a mar marginal cost, but for right now, just for you know, like for your information, there's a thing called marginal cost. Okay, so that's what I mean for the slope, and that's what I mean for the wanda step. And let's talk about how we can draw the graph, right? Let's talk about how we can uh, sketch the graph of this. Let me take some of these out of paper. All right, so since this one is already in the form of slope in the sub, which is like the easiest form, in my opinion, like this is the nicest form to me, we're gonna start with the y-intercept, and because it's a y-intercept, we're gonna start on the y-axis, okay? So this is x-axis, and the other one is y-axis. Let's imagine that this is like the mark of like uh, 350, thousand okay up here I'm not gonna label all of them from like one to three fifty thousand because it's just like um, it's not worth it for the time okay I'm trying to write this thing on but it doesn't listen okay let me try again okay so three fifty K for our three fifty thousand dollar okay and then say we have a point right here this point originally is again zero and three fifty thousand right now 50 is 50 over one so we're gonna go up by 50 on the y-axis and go sideways one to the right hand side so up one sideways is right here this is our second point and then we connect them we get the line this is the model that we're looking for to label it, we're gonna write at the arrow for like this line can be extended to like further. You can take like the whole page to extend the, the line. I don't mind, but it will be like costly for the paper. So to label it, you just have to copy the equation right out here. So C of X, the cost is 50X plus 350,000. Okay. And again, you only need two points for this. The first point, the very first point, is by, is by the y-intercept. You can find on the, on the y-axis. To get to the second point, you go up by 50, and you go to the right by 1. So let me write up 50, and then right by 1. And you get the second point, and then you connect them, you get the graph, okay? So for your example, um, let me get rid of this. You're gonna you're gonna do the similar procedure. First, you find this number on the y-axis. Make sure you label the two axes, x and y. The horizontal axis is x axis, and the vertical um, axis is the y-axis. Okay. And for this number, though, your case is different than my case because my case I have a positive fifty, right? So I go up. But for your case, you're gonna go down because it's at negative. And remember the fact that negative one. 175 is actually negative 175 over 1 right so you're gonna go down and then you're gonna go down by 175 and then you go to the right by 1 now if you notice we always go to the right okay up and down is by your sign is by the side of the problem if you have a positive slope you go up if you have a negative slope you go down but as the bottom of the fraction as for the denominator of the fraction like I have one in here and I have one there. We always go to the right. So make sure you don't go to the left, okay? And for the definition of like this small small business, that is your turn. So let me put a green star in here, okay? And then up next, we have second objective, fighting the slope of a line. Okay, so we talk about um, like how the slope and the line step are found. In, in a given equation, right? Like if you have an equation, whatever number attached to x, we call it the slope and whatever like free number, like the one with no variable at all next to it, we call it the y-intercept, right? So now how can we actually find a slope, right? We have the function for it. Um, here, let me put it in red. Okay, 
So the formula for the slope m in here equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And they go by pair, right? So this one is your first point, x1, x, x1, y1. And then the other one is your second pair point or just second point, x2, y2. Okay, now what I mean by that, right? Like if I'm not making myself uh, clear, then let's go for the first example right here. This is my first point, so let's call this is x1 and this is y1. This is not my, these are not my commas, those are the ones, but in like really bad handwriting, sorry for that. And then the second point, this one, I'm gonna call it x2, y2, okay? So now according to the formula, we have y2 minus y1, which is negative one minus minus negative three. Now in the past, I have a lot of people making a mistake in here. So notice that this minus, the minus one in here is from the problem, right? It has negative one in there. And this negative three in here is from also the problem because the problem gives you a negative number. But this negative here in blue, this one is from the formula, okay? So please don't give me something like this for this case. Why? Because this negative, do you mean like the negative from the formula or do you refer to the negative of the given problem? Negative three, I don't know, so I'm gonna mark it wrong, okay? Because you, you, you miss one negative. There should be two negatives in, in this case for part A, okay? And as for the denominator of the fraction, we have x2 minus uh, x1, so that means we have negative three minus one, okay? In this case in here, we only have one negative in between. We don't have that blue negative from the formula. It's because this one in here is a positive one, right? So we don't need the second negative in there. It's just one negative from the, ne from the formula, and that's all, okay? So let me get rid of this and that. All right, let's calculate it down. This in here on top, I'm gonna get negative one in here, and because I have neg two negatives in front of three, that turns out to a positive right there. You can rewrite on it, or you can just write separately like this, and you can rewrite everything else. And on the top part, you have negative one and three. Think of it like you lost a dollar, or like you spent a dollar, but then you earn three dollars. Then what do you have in total? You're gonna have two dollars, okay? And on the bottom, Think about it as like you spend or like you you lost three dollars and and then you continue to lose another dollar then in total you lost four dollars right so if you're not like familiar with the system of negative numbers think about it like money just, just think about it like your bank statement your bank account think about it like your debt and then your salary that is di directly deposited into your account Negative like number is when you spend something and positive number is when you earn something or when you get that much of salary for, you know, that month, okay? Okay, back to this problem. We have two over four in here. If you put it into the calculator, some calculator can simplify it for you and that gives us one over two. But wait, we have a negative right here. That means that the final answer for this one, the slope, it is negative one over two. And if you ask me, like, why do I write a negative on top while on the previous step, the negative is onto the four, not onto the two, or not onto the one. And I'm gonna tell you, there's two ways to write this. You can either write it as negative one over two or negative in, in the middle and one over two, but never write a negative on the bottom because, I don't know, it looks ugly to see it on the bottom. And if you, if you uh, like, read math books, I don't think anyone would put a negative on the bottom on the bottom of any fraction in any textbook. Okay, and that's the first example. Um, let's do the second example real quick. Let me change the color just so they don't get to one another. So again, for part B, I have two points. The first point I'm gonna label them x1, y1, x2, y2, and once I get um, all of them labeled, I'm gonna do m, the slope, equals to y2 minus y1, which is one minus negative three. And then for the x part, I have three minus negative one, okay? And because we have like two negatives on the top in here, we have one plus three. On the bottom, we have three plus one. 
Okay. So again, these are all like positive numbers. So if you want, you can think of it like three plus, uh, one plus two, we have four. If you don't want to, think of it like you earn one dollar and then you earn another three dollars. So in total, you earn four dollars, okay? And same things go for the bottom. So I get a four in here, four divided by four, I have one, okay? Now, just like a heads up in the, uh, in, in the test and in the assessment and quizzes in general, if you stop it here, if you just give me four over four, I'm gonna take out like one or two points off because that could be simplified further. Okay, so make sure you do all the things that you can before you turn into work. Okay, don't leave the work just like hanging. Okay, and then part C, same thing pretty much. We're gonna have X2, I mean X1 in here. I trip on ready. Okay, X1, Y1, and then X2, Y2. All right, I have negative three minus negative three in here, and then three minus one. So shortcut, I have negative three plus three on top, which is zero, and I have two on the bottom. Now remember one thing, if you have zero on the top, the answer is zero, and if you have the zero on the bottom, for example, if you have something like two divided by zero, this is undefined, or if you want, you can write a word does not exist, okay? So keep in mind that there's like two scenarios for the zeros. If you have zero on top, for say, for this example, like if you go with this number, think about it like this. If you have zero candy and you want to share like zero candy with two people, then how many candies does each of them have? Zero, right? Because it's just like you air, you have, you have air and then you do like distribute air to the two people that you have. But this scenario in here, you have two candies, but you want to distribute it to no one, like no people, no one at all, then that doesn't make sense, right? Because, well, unless you talk about ghosts, but well, that's just a joke. All right, so part B, we're gonna have same thing in here, x1, y1, x2, y2, I'm gonna do it in fast way. So m in here equals to negative one minus negative three over one minus one in here. On the top, I have negative one plus three, which is two. On the bottom, I have zero. This is just the case that I just talked about. Um, this is when we have the zero on the bottom. That, can, that cannot happen. That's when the answer would be doesn't exist, okay? And for the last case, we have m equals to negative one minus negative three over negative three minus negative one. This in here, it is negative one plus three on top, which is two, and on the bottom, we have negative two. So the final answer in here is negative one, okay? If you notice the order really matters, don't do, please don't do mix and match. So we all know that for part E, the answer, wait, sorry about that. All right, so we all know that for part E, the answer in here is negative one, right? But let me show you like a common mistake that a lot of people make for this example. Okay. I saw a lot of people doing something like, I don't know, like negative one minus negative one in here and negative three minus negative three in here. And when I asked them why, they just told me like, well, this is why and well this is from the second point and this is from the first point so it doesn't really matter like the order of x and y and i'm gonna tell them this is wrong okay the order matters a lot as you can see in here the pair of two has to go first and the pair of one has to go secondly if you don't want that happen you can do the, the first pair first and the second pair secondly but please don't mix and match okay this is not like mcdonald don't mix and match okay um let's move on to oh wait here's your assignment let me put a green star to it before you before i forget these five all right next up we have objective three writing linear equations if a point x1 y1 is a point well if x1 y1 is a point lying on a non-vertical line of slope m and x and y is an other point is another point on the line then m the slope equals to y minus negative y1 and then uh, divided by x minus x1 or we can write as excuse me 
y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1. Now if you know this, this one, m in here is m divided by 1. And if you cross multiply, you're going to get this equation. Okay, so this is just like the explanation for the form that we got right here. And we call it the point slope form. So keep in mind that so far we have two forms for, for linear equation, right? Let me go to the back page. Okay, we have, uh, no, this is a slope. This is not the line form. Okay, this one. We have slope in the set form. This is the formula for it. Make sure you memorize it. And we also have the point slope form. And this is the formula for it. I mean, yeah, formula for it. So make sure you can tell the difference between the two formulas and make sure you know the names of them. Don't switch the name of them. Don't tell me that y go to mx plus b is a slope form. I mean, it's the point slope form. And, you know, give like names to any of the two formulas that I just mentioned, okay? And in fact, um, like this one is not my opinion, but in the book it say that uh, the point slope is the most, is the most use, useful form in the sense that you don't have to like do a lot of work for, if you want to get to the slope in the set form, you have to isolate the y. That's why it say that this form is rather be useful compared to any, uh, any other form including the slope into set form. But yeah, for now, just make sure that you have these two formed out and you know the names of them, you know the formulas of them, okay? All right, example three, find the equation of the line that has the given slope m and passes through the point p. If we call this equation f, what is f of negative one and what is x value such as f of x equal to three? All right. So we have the slope in here, we have the point here, and for the point, we're gonna call it x1, y1, okay? So make sure that you don't call the point x and y. Why is that so? Because x and y are referred to the variable that you use in here and here. You don't want to do that, okay? So make sure x1, y1 in here are the numbers of the point that is given to us from the problem, okay? So let's use this formula right here real quick. Y is just Y, Y is the variable, right? And Y1 is given as negative five. And again, we have two negatives, one from the negative five and the other one from the formula because we have the negative right here, okay? And we have equal sign and then we have the slope, which is negative three over two given by the problem. And then open parenthesis, we have X for the variable. We have minus and X1 in here is two. Okay, let's simplify this one a little bit. Well, you don't have to isolate a y, right? Because the, the question doesn't ask us to write this equation in the slope in the set form or any form, right? So you don't have to isolate y. But if you have like the two negatives, like this situation in here, make sure you just write a positive like this for me, okay? In the test or in any assessment. That would be like nicer to look at, okay? So this is the answer that I'm looking for. And the next question, if, uh, if we call this equation f, what is f of negative one, right? So usually we learn that um, the function, it goes by f of x, right? It means that whatever standing in the parentheses after f, this refer to x, okay? So with that saying, let's plug x in, let plug negative in for x. So if you do it in a calculator, you're gonna get uh, negative one minus two, which is negative three, and negative three over two times negative three, we're gonna get something like uh, nine over two. And let's go ahead and rewrite the left-hand side of the equation, which is y plus five, right? And after this, we're gonna minus five on both sides, and then the value that we get for y is, let me grab my calculator, negative one over two. Okay, that's the second part of this question. Last part, what is x value such as f of x equals to three? Okay, remember that you have two variable, right? You have x and you have y. This three in here is not in the parentheses after, after f. That means that it must be the other variable, which is y, okay? So now, let me get rid of this because it's not applicable for the third question anymore. So let's plug in three for y 
And then here we're going to get on the left hand side of the equation, we have 3 plus 5, which is 8. On the right hand side of the equation, let's this review this out because according to PEMDAS, we have to do parentheses first. So then we have negative 3 over 2x. And then if you want to multiply, okay, let me put it here. Negative 3 over 2 times negative 2. We all know that negative 2 is negative 2 over 1. And then before we uh, multiply them like straight ahead, let's cancel the 2's in here and let's cancel the negatives in here. So we have uh, in here, we have 1 and 1 for 2 goes into 1 time. So up top we have 3 times 1, which is 3. On the bottom we have 1 times 1, which is 1. 3 divided by 1, the answer is 3. So we have a positive 3 in here. Okay, and how can we get x? We're going to minus both sides by 3. And we have 5 in here. And after that, okay, here's the hard part. Ready? To cancel a fraction, to cancel the negative 3 over 2 in here, let me put it in pink because it's important. We're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of whatever fraction in front of it which mean negative two over three. Now be careful with the sign here. If you multiply only just by two over three, that's not enough, okay? Because you're not gonna cancel out a negative. You're gonna leave the negative with x. It doesn't disappear, right? If you don't like do something to cancel it, it's not gonna go away. You have to do something to cancel it. Okay, so if you think about it, the twos in here are canceled, the threes in here are canceled also, and the negatives also go away. Okay, so on the right hand side, we only have x left. And on the left hand side here, 5 is 5 over 1. And if you multiply like everything together, x equals 2. Up top, we have negative 2 times 5, which is negative 10. On the bottom, we have 3 times 1, which is 3. So, so this is the third answer that we got from this question. Okay. Now, let's talk about how to graph this equation, right? So let me get rid of some information in here. We're probably not gonna need this equation either. All right, now it's clear. Okay, let me put it back in red. Okay, we have a point here, right? So first of all, let's plot this point. Where is two and negative five? We go to two and then we go down to negative five, which is right here. This is P. And after that, we have the slope of negative two over negative three over two. And I told you guys, if you have a fraction for the slope, we're gonna go either up and down or down on the top part. But because this is negative three, a negative number, we're gonna go down by three, and then we're gonna go to the right by two. Okay, so from this point, you go down by three. I'm running out of space, but let's just imagine. Okay, let me put in another color. Okay, so you go one down, two down, three down, and then you go to the right by two. One to the right, two to the right. And then lastly, you connect the two points together. This is your point, okay? Now, some of you guys may ask me, well, in the last example, I only draw one arrow for the, the, the graph of the line. Why do I have two arrows? For this graph, and I'm gonna tell you when it comes to real life problems, when it comes to real life examples, we cannot extend anything on the negative values because it doesn't make sense to have like negative time, negative product, or negative, I don't know, like t-shirt, car, or something like that. In real life problem, it doesn't make sense to have like negative measure in anything. But this is like, has nothing to do with real life application, right? Just like math problem. That's why you have to extend on both sides of the graph, okay? And remember, for linear equation, you only need two points. The first point should be given by the problem, and the second point, you have to base it on the, the, on the slope to like go to the proper point, and then you connect the two points together, you got, the go you got the line, okay? And please do me a favor in the test. Make sure you label these information out, okay? For example, for point P, I'm going to label it as 2 and negative 5 because it's given that. And for the line, I'm going to copy the, the equation that we had earlier, which is y plus 5 equals to negative two, 3 over 2 and then x minus 2. Okay? So in terms of labeling, whatever is, give, is given to you, make sure you label them. Okay? And let me put a green star on your part. Okay? 
Now, let's move on to the next objective. Parallel and perpendicular lines. You're gonna def you definitely will see this on the, on the exam, okay? So please pay attention to what I'm about to say next. All right, so given a, a line, say given any line, randomly say something like this, okay? You're gonna have like a parallel line to it. What does it mean by parallel? It means that the next line that you draw can have no like contact with the original line that you have, okay? And parallel is just, I know how to explain it in, in English like properly, but technically it doesn't intersect. Like the two lines are parallel to each other if they have no contact, if they have no point of intersection at all, if they don't meet each other at all, okay? So if you like extend this line on both sides and you extend this the second line on both sides, they don't meet whatsoever, right? Like even if you continue to draw these two lines to like pages, they don't ever meet each other because they are parallel, okay? Um, and in terms of perpendicular lines, let me erase this one. Okay, given like a red line here, um, if I ask you to draw a perpendicular line to it, you can draw something like this. What does it mean by perpendicular? It means that like they have to create a right angle to each other. They cannot be like this. They cannot be like this. Those are like just in the second line, okay? So pink lines in here are not the good examples for perpendicular lines. The right perpendicular the right perpendicular lines to the given line here is only this one in here. And if you want, you can draw another perpendicular line to the original line, like this, and like this, and keep like drawing like that, okay? So in this objective, make sure that you have like two ideas of parallel lines and perpendicular lines, okay? Let me get rid of these like examples first. All right, so math-wise, two distinct non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if the slopes are equal to the other, and then they're, okay, and we know that the slope in here refers to M, right? So if you have two lines, we call, we're going to call the slope of them M1 and M2. M1 must be equal to M2 if the two lines are parallel to each other, okay? So with that saying, let's do, okay, so your case, you're going to need to um, get the same slope. But for my case, I'm not going to need to get the same slope because based on the second definition, two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the slopes are negative reciprocal of each other. That means that, say, if you have two lines that have M1 and M2, M1 must be equal to negative M2. I mean negative over M2, okay? I'm gonna demonstrate in the next example. I do the perpendicular case because it's harder, but for your case, for the parallel case, I think it's gonna be easier because you don't have to do much for the slope. You just have to copy the slope and then just use a point here. And to stress it out, we have the point here, okay? It's also a part of the given information. All right, so first thing first, Let's isolate y. Let me just write like the steps in here for you guys to follow. First step, isolate y. Isolate y. All right, so we need y, okay? So we need to get rid of negative uh, 0.3x, and we also need to get rid of 0.5 for my part. So first of all, let's add 0.3x to both sides of the problem. Then these two cancel, and we're gonna get 0.5y equals to 0.3x plus 1.2. Okay, some of you guys may ask me, well, why don't I just add 1.2 and 0.3 together to get 1.5x? And I'm gonna tell you this. 1.2 in here is a loner. It doesn't have any variable attached to it, while 0.3x in here has the variable, okay? So they are two different categories. You cannot add 0.3 and 1.2 together. That's a big no-no, okay? It's just like you add a candy and a rock together. It doesn't make any sense, okay? If you add a candy to a candy, that makes more candy, right? Because like, if you melt a candy, you're gonna make the bigger candy out of it. But if you add a rock to a candy, it's just, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so if you have like an X variable and a free number, Make sure leave them as they are. Don't add them together, okay? 
and now if you want to isolate a y we're going to divide everything by 0.5 okay so notice that you have like two terms on the right side right you have like the x variable and you also have the loner so make sure you divide each of them by 0.5 okay all right so on the left hand side these two canceled out and i just have like y left on the right hand side i would refer decimal no i would refer fractions over decimal so if you can please give me fraction okay don't give me decimal unless i told i tell you to route it off to like some decimal places i'll just give me the correct form of it just give me the fraction form okay so if you do 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.5 in some calculator it will give you 3 over 5 Okay, and because it has an x variable, let's put it down right here. And then for the free number, if you do 1.2 divided by 0 0.5, you're going to get something like 12 over 5. Okay. So this is, okay, so this is like the first line here. So that means that this slope in here is your M1 because this is the first line. It's the given line from the problem, okay. And for my case, because it's asking me to find a perpendicular line to this, that means I have to use this formula in here to get M2. I will do negative 1 divided by M2, which means negative 1 divided by 3 over 5. If you input into the calculator, it's going to give you negative 5 divided by 3. Or if you want to think about it, you just have to flip it and put a negative onto it. Or I should say the word negate. If it's positive, negate it to make it negative. And if it's negative already, negate it to make it positive. Okay? So this is your slope and this is your point. And if you recall the last example, when you given a point and a slope, how we did it is that we use the we use a point slope form. Let's do it again in this example. Okay? So with that saying, we're gonna get y minus y1 and let me label this one as x1 and y1 so my y1 in here is 3 and then up next we have the slope negative 5 divided by 3 open parenthesis x minus negative 1 and if you still wonder how I got this line of formula or like this line of work in here this referred to the last page on where we have the slope point formula and the formula for it is y minus y1 equals to m and then x minus x1 okay all right so um this is like okay i'm lazy and i'm running out of space so that's why i'm gonna like remove like one more step and i'm just gonna do these negative as a positive so let me write properly and I'm gonna call this the answer because I like simplify the negative already. So let me box this one. All right, so how can I, um, so how can I plot this? Well, I give you the graph in here so that I can, you, can gra you can give me the graph of the two lines, okay? I want to graph up this line from here and I also want to graph up this line from here, okay? So in order to get this graph in here, first of all, let's start from, okay, the y in the set. If you put 12 divided by 5 in the calculator, let's see what we get in here. 12 divided by 5, we got 2.4, right? So this is the y in the set, so it should be found on the y-axis. 2.4 is around like here in the middle between like 2 and 3. Okay. And we get uh, 3 divided by 5. It means that we go up by 3 and then we go to the right by 5. So we go up 1, 2, 3, and to the right by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, sorry for the mess. Let me just clean these up. Wait, I'm going to need... Okay, I'm going to need this equation, so let me keep it there. Okay, let me start over for this one. technology okay so let me go up by three one two three and from there let me go to the right by five 
one, two, three, four, five. I got my point right here, and my original point is right there, so I connect them, and I got this. So this is the first, very first line that we have from the problem, right? And now, here comes the second line that we just got. Let me put this one in blue. Okay, this one in here is perpendicular to the pink line, right? And it has to pass through the, the point negative one and three. So let's find the point negative one and three first. Negative one and three, it should be right here. Okay, there's actually two ways to draw the thing. One way is that if you're lazy like me, first of all, draw the point and then you can just eyeball it out. This is perpendicular, okay, that's a bad one. Okay, this is perpendicular to the pink line just by eyeballing it out, okay? Or there's a second way, you can solve for y in here. And then from there, you start from the y-intercept and then you go up or down depending on your slope and then you go to the right and then to get the other point and then you connect the two points together and then you get the blue line, okay? So there's two, two ways to do it. First way, you just eyeball it out by getting the point and then drawing a perpendicular line to the original line. The second way, the more accurate way, you solve for y, you isolate y, and then you do it properly by going through the y-intercept and by going through the slope, and you have it, okay? Either way would, would be fine. Say in the quiz or in the test, if you don't have time, I would say just eyeball it because I'm only asking you to sketch the graph, okay? It doesn't have to be like super accurate. Like just by eyeball it out, I guarantee with you guys that this like method is 90% true out of like all time already, okay? So if you don't want to waste your time, waste your word, just eyeball it out, okay? And again, green star for, you have to do this problem right here. And notice that for your problem, it's asking for parallel line, okay? So you cannot use like the same method of finding the, the second slope I, like I just did in here. It's actually easier. You're gonna do the first uh, procedure just like me for isolate y in here but then after that you're gonna get the same slope okay so whatever you slope for whatever slope you get for the first line that's your slope for the second line okay if you have any question let me know um, another note before we move on is that there's another important form of the equation of a line we call it the standard form let me clean these out so you can see my note Okay, let me highlight this one. Okay, so this is called the standard form, and the form for it, the formula for it is a, ax plus by plus c equal to zero. Okay, there's supposed to be a plus c in here, I just forget to put it, I'm sorry. So let me rewrite this formula. ax plus by plus c equal to zero. This is my equal sign. Okay, and a and b, cannot be both zero okay so let's say if a is zero b must be different than zero and if b is zero a must be different than zero they cannot be zero at the same time okay so just a recap for until now we learned three forms of a line right the first one is a slope intercept form the the formula for it is y equal to mx plus b the second formula or the second form of it is the slope point is the point slope or slope point form. The formula for it is y minus y1 equals to m times open parenthesis x minus x1 plus parenthesis. And the third form is the standard form where you have ax plus by plus c equal to zero. Make sure you remember these three formula and make sure you can tell the difference between these three formulas, okay? All right, so this one is optional um, because we all like business major. So I throw it there just so you guys like read it for fun, just in case you guys might see the scenario in your company later on when you like go out there and then get a job. They might ask you to analyze a situation when you have a business and you might have to like, you know, analyze a problem. So you don't have to do this one at all. That's why I'm not gonna put a green star to it. And I'm not gonna test you on this one, okay? But if you have any question on this one or in any concept I just like mentioned about, let me know, okay? Thank you for your listening and bye-bye.